Good afternoon, everyone. The parish community of St. Mary's wishes to extend a warm welcome to all who come to worship here with us, especially all visitors. This weekend, we celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We also want to thank you for continuing to use our sign-up genius system, as it is the best way to ensure a seat for all who want to attend Mass. The St. Joseph Parish online auction is now open, with more than 20 items available to bid on. Please visit the collaborative homepage for the link to the auction website. The auction will close at 8 p.m. on October 4th. We thank you for your support. On behalf of our priests in good standing, we also thank you for your generous support of last week's special collection to benefit the Clergy Health and Retirement Trust. The strength and vibrancy of our communities depend on the health and the well-being of our priests, and truly healthier priests build stronger communities. We are also pleased to announce the ordination of Deacon Paul Key to the permanent diaconate. Deacon Paul will be ordained at the, at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross excuse me, on Saturday, October 3rd at 10 a.m. We are also happy to announce Deacon Paul has been assigned to the Saints Mary and Joseph Collaborative. Please consider joining us for a Holy Mass of Thanksgiving to be celebrated at St. Mary's Parish on Sunday, October 4th at 10.30 a.m. At this Mass, we remember in a special way all parishioners of St. Mary's. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Colody. Good afternoon. Very, very happy to welcome all of you to our celebration of the Eucharist for this Sunday. Let us now join together in prayer and in praise of God, thanking God for our gifts, asking for God's help of all of our needs as we pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate our Eucharist together, as always, we pause to call to mind any of our own failings and ask our merciful God for gifts of forgiveness and of peace. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way that leads us back to God, our Heavenly Father. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the guidance of your truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd who calls each one of us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who manifests your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, it is my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness that he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. of my youth and my frailties remember not in your kindness remember me because of your goodness O Lord good and upright is the Lord Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. Each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered the first. Jesus said to them, And then I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. When I just started out as a priest, there was a young man who was in our youth group. And as he grew older, I did his wedding and baptized some of his kids. And he moved down to Virginia. And in his parish every year in Virginia, they used to rent out a campground. And they would have a retreat. And the retreat master would talk to the adults and that had someone that would take care of the kids. It was kind of a nice combination of a spiritual but also vacation time for these families. And so one year they asked me if I would be willing to lead the retreat. And the theme they chose that year was the God of second chances. And so basically we went through the scriptures and talked about different individuals to whom God gave a second chance. Remember a good old Jonah and the whale. Remember God says to him, you got to go to Nineveh and tell the people they got to change their way of life. And Jonah says, no way, they're going to kill me. And so he boards a ship and heads away from Nineveh. And of course, he gets thrown off the ship, gets caught in a whale, thrown back up on the shores of Nineveh. And because God gave him that second chance to preach, he converted a lot of hearts. King David started out as a magnificent king. He always gave God credit for any of the good things that he did. But then power went to his head, and he committed some very grievous wrongs. And he had to repent of those things. But God gave him also a second chance. Maybe the poster boy for second chances is St. Peter. Remember how he denied Christ three times? And yet... Jesus gave him a second chance and chose him to be the leader of his infant church. He could go on with other examples, the woman caught in adultery, the good thief on the cross. All those people recipients of second chances from God. In a way, that's some of the theme of today's gospel. The first kid says, I'm not going to work in the vineyard today, and, but then changes his mind. And the father gives him a second chance to do the job that he asked him to do in the first place. So today, how would you like to do something really different for a homily? I've never tried this before. I read it the other day in a magazine. Are you willing? Okay. Here's what we got to do. And in a minute, I'm going to stop speaking. And I'm going to ask each one of you, in your head, don't say it out loud, but in your head, say the Our Father. And when you get to the part that says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, I want you to take a moment and put a name in that spot. Is there someone in your life to whom you need to give a second chance? Or is there something in your own life 
they need to ask God to help you to forgive in yourself. I'm sure that we have all said the Our Father so many times in our lives we couldn't, we couldn't number it. But I think putting that name in there makes that prayer very real. So take a moment to say that Our Father and think of a name that you'd put in that needs to receive the gift of your forgiveness. Prayer should always lead us to action. So now if you name that person or that issue, what are you going to do about it? Because, you know, prayer, it doesn't have that much value if it's just something we recite over and over again and don't let it touch our hearts and influence our actions. Ask the Holy Spirit, to help you decide how you're going to reconcile with that person. How are you going to give them a second chance? Going to give them a phone call? Going to write them a note? What do you want to do to make the words of the Lord's Prayer alive in your life? Please join me now in the Lord in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus has promised that when we gather together as a family and community of faith, of hope, and of charity, he is present among us. So now with great confidence, let us make known to the Lord our prayers and our needs. For the grace of conversion that God will help all who have made poor or destructive choices to change course and to follow Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of our attitudes, that God will free us from the desires to control, to be selfish, and help us to strive to serve others with love, patience, and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from the aftermath of the hurricanes or the wildfires, that God will protect them from further harm, help them to connect with families and friends, and fill their hearts with courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants and for refugees, they're all who have fled violence, starvation, or persecution, may find welcome and places of safety to live. Let us pray to the Lord. 
slide here on up here. For healing of the earth, that God will inspire us to act boldly in addressing climate change and other abuses of the earth so that those who are suffering may be relieved and that the future may hold many blessings for the human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the parishioners of St. Mary's, whom today's Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, we remember in our prayers those who are sick, those whose lives are challenged in so many different ways. And we ask the Lord to bring to eternal rest and peace the souls of all of our faithful departed. We pray to the Lord. O Lord, we thank you for the gift of our lives and the gift of our faith. We pray for the grace, help, and strength we need to always put our faith into action in real and practical ways. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessings may be laid open before us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we may have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with the new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before us, your people, a time of grace and reconciliation, and as we turn back to you in spirit, you grant us hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while we now entrust ourselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as without end we now acclaim. Holy, 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 Hosanna, Hosanna in the 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by saying down your spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, all the clergy and faithful. Remember also our sisters, our brothers, who have fallen asleep on the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the 
sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us both in mind and in body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death. For he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This parish was conducting some seminars on how to have a successful marriage. And so the priest uh, noticed Giuseppe sitting in the crowd and knew that he'd been married almost 50 years. So he said, Giuseppe, could you share some of the secrets of a successful marriage with the crowd here since you've been married for so very, very long? So Giuseppe said, well, it's, it's kind of simple. He said, you know, I treat my wife very, very nicely. I let her buy whatever she wants. I do a lot of the chores around the house. And for our 25th wedding anniversary, I took her to Italy. Well, the priest said, that's an impressive amount of information. That'll be very helpful to our, our group gathered here today. Tell us, with all those wonderful things you do, what in the world are you going to do to celebrate your 50th wedding anniversary? He said, well, I'm going back to Italy, and I'm going to bring her back home. <laughs> you saw that coming, didn't you? Yes. I'm so transparent, can I say. But thank you all so much for being here this evening. I hope you have a very safe and healthy week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our celebration of the Eucharist is now ended. Let us go forth to live in the peace and in the service of Christ. Thanks be to God.